Hey everybody, it is Dak here from the Ed Boys, and today we have an updated Cal Fight Queen guy. The Cal Fight Queen is a very classic boss in old school RuneScape, which means that the fight is pretty simple. The difficulty in killing the Cal Fight Queen is really just having high enough stats and good enough gear to get the kill. Uh, the KQ also has gotten a nice update in the drop table very recently to help liven her up a bit. As usual, I do plan on uploading a couple of hours of KQ grind to show you more examples than you're going to get in this guide, so I will have those uploads linked in the description when they do come out. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into this actual guide, though. In this guide, I will start with the requirements and the recommended stats for killing the Cal Fight Queen. Then we're going to go over the gear and inventory you can bring into the Cal Fight Queen. Afterwards, we'll discuss how to travel to the KQ before we finally get into the actual fight. Uh, fighting the KQ is pretty easy, but I will be talking about both, just fighting the KQ normally and the flinching method that can be used for lower level accounts, uh, specifically Iron Man accounts, tend to get the most benefit out of that. And then we'll finish off the video going over the potential loot from the Cal Fight Queen. Let's start with the requirements for KQ. Technically, these are just recommendations this time. There's no actual requirement to try to fight the KQ. If you're a member and you've got two ropes, you can get yourself to the KQ's lair and try it out. So it's really just stats and gear for preparation, right? I don't suggest grinding out the Cal Fight Queen unless you have at least 80 plus in your melee stats and 80 plus range, since you're going to be using multiple attack styles. Even at base 80s in your combat, the fight's going to be a little bit of a pain sometimes because she is very accurate. So pushing to even 90 plus on those combat stats will make a big difference but also to be fair you can do the flinching method with like 60 plus in your stats if you're just trying to get one kill for the hard diary uh, 74 plus prayer and unlocking rigor and piety is going to go a long way for better kills but the bare minimum you'll want is to have protect from magic which is only 37 prayer uh, also it'd be very beneficial if you manage to get at least 83 construction so that you can boost up to make an ornate pool in your player own home and also having the fairy ring in your player own home is going to go a long ways uh, you very often only get like one maybe two kills per trip so being able to heal up at your house is pretty solid let's get started on the gear section of the guide generally you're going to wear melee gear into the fight and then bring a range switch with you so we're going to be talking about range gear in the inventory section uh, there's a lot of different gear that you could wear while grinding out kq depending on exactly what your budget is i'm going to feature a higher level setup in the screenshot here not quite max gear but there's definitely some expensive pieces we're going to go over every gear slot here to talk about the alternative options for gear depending on how much money you have of course if you're going to flinch your kills, then gear is not as big of a deal, but no matter the method that you're using, the stronger weapons and the more damage you do, the faster the kills will be, so it's always worth upgrading your gear whenever you can. In your head slot, you do have a lot of choices. If you're on a Cal Fight Slayer task, then you should be wearing the Slayer Helm, preferably you have an imbued Slayer Helm. Off task, the Inquisitor's Helm is best in slot because the Cal Fight Queen is weak to crush, and that Helm gives a crush bonus. Torva would be the next best option, even though it is more expensive than an Inquisitor's. Inquisitor's is not used in a lot of different bosses so it's very possible to have Torva and not have purchased Inquisitors yet you don't have to sell anything off to go get Inquisitors Torva is still very good here the Nate is not face guard is also a very good helm and it's not nearly as expensive as those top options and it's also what I'm wearing in the screenshot here uh, Serpentine Helm is pretty nice because it's good for melee strength and you don't get poisoned while wearing it so you don't have to bring an anti-poison and the lowest I would lean is the Helm of Nate is not which is still a very solid option and it only costs like 55k in your cape slot, the Infernal Cape is the best melee cape in the game, but for this boss, the Mythical Cape is actually the next best. Uh, it does have a crush bonus on it, and like I said, the KQ is weak to crush. The Fire Cape is still a great option for melee, and if you have not gotten your Fire Cape quite yet, then I would just wear your Ava's device with you. You're going to be using range in the second phase of the fight, so normally you're bringing an Ava's switch, so it's not that bad just to wear it. In the next slot, we've only got a few options here. The Amulet of Torture is the best in slot melee choice, with the Fury still being a good second choice and much cheaper. Uh, the Amulet of Fury is very nice because it's also the second best ranging amulet. So if you don't have an Amulet of Torture and a Necklace of Anguish to switch with it, the Fury is good for both melee and range. Uh, the Blood Fury is also a nice choice if you find yourself getting beaten up a little bit during the fight. The Blood Fury has the same stats as a regular Fury, but it can heal you while you're using melee. I really only suggest using the Blood Fury if you're struggling or learning a boss. It does cost more money to use since you have to charge it with Blood Shards. So once you feel comfy with the Calfight Queen, I would really just stick to a regular fury to save on those charges for higher level stuff uh, if you don't even have the amulet of fury then the amulet of glory is the last choice that i would go for your ammo slot does depend on what range weapon you bring with you in your inventory the best range weapon choices are the blowpipe and the bofa which don't use ammo so if you're using a range weapon that does not need arrows or bolts then you should just bring a blessing for the extra prayer bonus rada's blessing four gives a plus two prayer bonus and then every other blessing is plus one so they're all tied for a second 
As I have mentioned a couple times, the Calphite Queen is weak to Crush, so each of your melee weapon choices, they better be good on Crush. Best in slot weapon for the KQ is actually the Karis Partisan of Breaching. This is a Karis Partisan plus a blue gem from the Tombs of Masket, Raids 3. The blue Karis absolutely blasts the Calphite Queen, but even if you haven't done any Raids 3, the regular Karis is still pretty insane. The Karis Partisan is a reward from the Beneath Cursed Sands quest. Uh, if you're wearing full Inquisitors and you're using a Scythe on Crush, then it will do a little bit more damage than a regular Karis Partisan, but it's also more expensive to use, so I wouldn't use the Scythe on the Calphite Queen. Karis Partisan is the way to go. Uh, if you haven't done Beneath Cursed Sands, then your next best Crush weapon in order is going to be the Inquisitor's Mace, then the Abyssal Bludgeon, which is still very good, uh, and then the Zami Hasta. Uh, you can even go as low as the Leaf Bladed Battle Axe, and you'll still do pretty well in here, to be fair. I do highly suggest you get that Karis Partisan, though, if you plan on grinding some KQ kills. In your shield slot, you should be wearing a defender. The Avernic Defender is best in slot, but it is a fairly expensive upgrade, so that Dragon Defender is still a good option. From there, either a Book of War or an Obsidian Shield is an alright call, but if you have the stats to be attempting KQ, then you really should grind out your Dragon Defender by now. For your chest and legs, similar to the helmet slot, there's a lot of options. Inquisitors is best in slot because of the crush bonus, and then Torva is a close second while also being more expensive. The Banos chestplate and the Banos tacits are good options, good classic options for melee, but they're not necessarily cheap, so if you're in need of a budget option here, you could wear the fighter torso and some blessed dehyde chaps. The fighter torso provides the same strength as the Banos chestplate, and the blessed dehyde chaps are solid for defense, plus you're using range in the second phase, so now you don't have to bring a pant switch. For your glove slot, the Ferocious Gloves are the best melee gloves, but Barrow's Gloves are still very good, and if you bring Barrow's Gloves, you don't need to bring a ranging glove switch, since Barrow's Gloves are also second best in slot for range. If you don't have Barrow's Gloves, then you generally just work your way down the Recipe for Disaster Gloves options, Dragon, to Rune, to Addy, and eventually Myth Gloves, which are the same as a combat bracelet, so you might as well just buy one of those. The best in slot melee boots are primordial boots, very closely followed by dragon boots. Uh, spiked manacles do have the same offense as dragon boots, just worse defense. But realistically, dragon boots should be like your worst option. They're pretty easy to get to. If you have really good range boots, but no melee boots, you could just wear those instead. But even the best range boots don't make a huge difference compared to the rest of your range gear. Honestly, boots in general are pretty weak. Finally, we have the ring slot, which there's not that many options. The Berserker ring is still your best option at the moment, and it is the cheapest of the rings that we're listing off here. Uh, the Ring of Suffering is very good for bonus defense, and if you stuff it with recoils, you'll get a little bit of bonus damage on the boss, but it is pretty expensive. The Tyrannical ring is not bad for the crush bonus, and finally, I'll shout out the Brimstone ring for being helpful when you're using melee and when you're using range. Uh, it's nice to get the boost on both melee and range, but still, if you're just using an imbued Berserker ring, is a little bit better than that. Uh, make sure whichever ring you choose, you do imbue it, other than that Brimstone, which can't be imbued. If you still have any questions about melee gear, let me know in the comments section below. We're moving on to the inventory now. Uh, first, let's go over the range switches. Technically, the more switches you bring, the better damage you're going to pull off, but you still need some room for food and whatnot, so the six range switches has been a very nice sweet spot for me. Uh, you can adjust as you get more trips in the KQ. If you have food left over, maybe you're running out of food, just adjust what you're bringing with you. Uh, the most important switch is the weapon, of course. The blowpipe with dragon darts is going to be your best option here, but even with amethyst darts, you're going to blow through some KQ KC. If you have a bofa and full crystal armor, that's also an incredibly good choice choice for the range life. The Twisted Bow is going to crank on Calphite Queen, but it's more expensive than other good counterparts here. And if you don't have any of these weapons that I brought up, a crossbow with some diamond bolts will be your best option. Uh, the best crossbow is Zarek Crossbow, then Arma, then Dragon, then Rune. The Blowpipe really gets the job done incredibly well, so defaulting to just a Blowpipe, even with Addy Darts, is still going to be solid. Don't forget to bring an Ava's device to pick up your ammo for you. Even if you're using Bofa with Crystal Armor, the Ava's Assembler gives a 2% increase to range strength, and range strength is not always easy to get a boost on. I do have the Necklace of Anguish for a range necklace. If you only have the Amulet of Torture or a Necklace of Anguish, you can just bring one of them and then use the Amulet of Fury Switch for the other combat style. If you're deciding on which piece of Zenite jewelry to buy and you can only afford one, I would personally grab the Necklace of Anguish first and just rock the Fury in the melee slot for a little bit. And these last three switches that I'm bringing here would be my chest, my legs, and gloves. If you have Masori armor and Zarai Van Braces, then these will add great range strength, but if you don't have those best in slots, then you're still going to be okay. For the chest and legs, Arma is a good second best in slot, and then God Dehyde armor is incredibly close to Arma gear, and it's far cheaper than those other options. As for gloves, it's the same scenario with melee gloves. Barrow's gloves are your second best in slot, 
and then you just go down the list of recipe for disaster gloves after that. If you have a Dragon Warhammer or a Bando's Godsword for the runner-up, you should bring that for a spec weapon. Dropping the Calphite Queen's defense will help with the speed of your kills, and in general, you tend to do very short trips at the KQ, so if you have high enough level that your pool in the house is going to heal up spec, you're just doing that between every fight anyway, and you always have a couple of specs to use. Uh, the Arc Light Special Attack can lower defense levels too. It's really not that big of a deal at that point. And in general, lowering Calvi Queen's defense isn't as important as many other high-level bosses. That doesn't mean that it doesn't help, though. Don't forget your ropes. If you have not completed the Hard Desert Diaries, you will need to bring two ropes with you on every trip. Do not forget your ropes. The two Divine Potions at the top of the inventory actually can be pre-sipped instead of bringing them with you, especially if you're just getting those one-kill trips. So you can sip the Super Combat and the Ranging Potion at the bank, put them away, and then use those two Envy slots for another two items, maybe two ropes. Up here, I do have a Prayer Potion to heal up Prayer Points. Uh, again, if we go back to the potential one-kill trips, sometimes you're not going to need to even sip a Prayer Potion in one kill, and you might find that eventually you don't need to bring a Prayer Potion at all, since you can just heal up at your house or at the pool at the Ferox Enclave, maybe. This pink potion is a super anti-poison. You do need some sort of anti-poison unless you're wearing the Serpentine Helm during the fight. Super anti-poison is very cheap and you're not going to go through that many anti-poisons throughout the grind in general. In my rune pouch, I have blood runes, cosmic runes, and fire runes, plus the Book of the Dead next to my rune pouch so that I can summon thralls. Thralls give some solid, consistent bonus damage, but if you have not completed a kingdom divided, the next best option is going to be to bring Vengeance, which is on the Lunar Spellbook, and does require pretty high magic. The rest of the spots here are filled with food. Mana rays heal 22 per slot, so they're pretty solid for healing, but the higher level you are and the better gear that you have, the more you can survive on just weaker foods like Monkfish. One more time, if you have not completed the Hard Desert Diaries, do not forget you have to bring two ropes every time you kill it, not just the first time. Let's go ahead and move on to travel. The Calphite Queen resides in the Calphite Lair, which is just south of the Shanti Pass. This is actually like pretty close to Lumbridge, where you spawn into the game in the first place. It's not too far away, but there are some teleports that make bank trips a little bit easier. The best method of travel is a Fairy Ring, the B-I-Q Fairy Ring. Fairy Rings are pretty easy to unlock, and they're useful in many places, not just for KQ travel. But if you're going to grind out some Calphite Queen head, I highly suggest having the Fairy Ring option. If you don't have a Fairy Ring in your house, the Quest Cape has a great teleport on it that's really close to the Fairy Ring at the Legends Guild, and an even easier teleport to get would be the Arty Cloak from the Ardoin Easy Diaries, and then run over to the Fairy Ring by the Clock Tower. If you're not using a Fairy Ring, I would suggest using a Glory Teleport to al Karid and just bank at the Shanti Pass. Just getting to the lair is only half of the travel. When you enter the Calphite Lair from the desert, you are going to need a rope. In fact, you're going to need that second rope to get all the way to the KQ. You'll need to bring two ropes every kill until you complete the Desert Hard Diaries. Once you complete those Desert Hard Diaries, you do have to bring those ropes one more time to place them, and then they will be there permanently after that. The Calphite Lair is just one straight path, so you can't really get lost. Right as you enter, there is a nice shortcut that cuts off most of the run. This shortcut does require completing the Elite Desert Diaries, which you do need a KQ head for, so your first chunk of kills will be without the shortcut. The second hole here is where you're going to place your second rope, and the Calphite Queen's Lair is actually just right down there. Before you go into the room, you should peek or listen at one of the crevices to see if anybody else is currently in the room fighting the Calphite Queen. You can right-click on the shortcut, you can right-click on the hole to get into Calphite Queen, or you can right-click on this crack that's a safe distance from those guardians by the tunnel and just peek in there. You don't want to crash anybody, so just find a world that's empty. All right, let's go over to the KQ fight real quick. Uh, this is a very simple fight, so we might be discussing the flinching method even longer than just going in and killing the boss. Starting at the bank, I would suggest to precip your divine super combat and ranging potions unless you think you might get two kills. Uh, at that point, you can just sip, sip, eat like an anglerfish, put all that stuff away, and fill up your inventory with extra food, or maybe those two ropes if you didn't bring them yet. Also, if you do not have the shortcut, it's a good idea to sip a stamina potion so that you don't run out of run. You have a pretty far run ahead of you without that shortcut. I'm going to head into the Calphite Queen using the Fairy Ring, and even with the shortcut, it's a little bit of a run. Uh, when we head in there, you're going to be using melee on the first phase, and then range on the second phase. You can also just use Protect from Magic the entire fight. She uses all three attack styles, but in the first phase, she's using magic more often. 
And then in the second phase, it's even between magic and range, so you can just stick to protect from magic. Her melee attack is not as accurate as her magic and range, so you don't have to worry about that as much. Start the fight by dumping your Dragon Warhammer or your BGS specs on her, and then you melee her throughout the first phase. Anytime that you need to eat, make sure that you walk under the boss while you do it. That way you don't take even more damage while you are eating. When you KO the first phase, you should walk under her to switch to your range gear, and you can heal up while she's changing phases. In phase two, I just stick to protect from magic, switch over to your offensive ranging prayer whether it's rigor or just eagle eye and make sure even in the second phase you're walking under her to eat at that point you, you just KO her you just fight her make sure you heal up whenever you need it's really that simple she has no special mechanics no special attacks just kill her when you finish the kill she is always gonna drop some supplies which can be like a little bit of food for a potential second kill uh, it's very common for her to wipe out like all of your food though so it's not that big of a deal to just do one kill trips especially if you're not rocking max gear Go ahead and bank up, hit your house pool, and head back into the fight. If you do die in the Calify Queen room, make sure to bring a little bit of extra food with you. It can be a little bit hectic trying to pick up all your stuff when you died. Um, she doesn't hit that hard. She's mostly just accurate, though. So as long as you're paying attention to your health, it's actually kind of difficult to die in here. You just got to keep eating food and maybe teleport out safely once you've run out of food. All right, let's start looking over the flinching method of killing the Calphite Queen. Basically, if you don't know anything about uh, how flinching works, in this case, the idea is we want to get Calphite Queen stuck. Normally, when you stand under the Calphite Queen, um, she moves around and tries to hit you tries to find you while you're under her. If you get her stuck where she can't move in any of the four directions she normally would try to move around, then you can just attack her very slowly and she'll never get an attack off on you. Let's show you how that works. First, when I enter the room, the goal is to get both of these Calphite Guardians on me. Uh, once she spawns enough of the little Calphites, you don't have to do this with the Guardians, but if you haven't started a fight yet, then you kind of need to. Uh, you do want these guys to all line up like east to west. So you see how even all three, like the Calphite Queen and both Guardians are all kind of lined up right now. You don't want them to stack any other way you do need them lined up like that so they'll all they'll all stack up over in the corner here also in the corner here I want to show you that if you hold shift and you right click on any monster uh, this is as long as you're using rune light this is a rune light plugin uh, you can first of all tag that monster I'm gonna untag the calphite guardians and then tag them all again to show you that's how they are highlighted uh, that mostly helps with the calphite queen but with the guardians it'll help with the visual too and also if you shift right click you can swap shift click to walk here. You want to make the shift click walk here. Uh, you don't have to do this again on the Calphite Guardian, but on the Calphite Queen. Now, if I hold shift and I click under it, you see at least when I'm clicking shift that it's uh, it's flashing whether or not I click on the Calphite Guardian or if I walk under him. It'll be more obvious why this is helpful in a second. So when we run out of here, I want to actually run a little bit north of this second guardian, a little bit north of the Calphite Queen. That way this one guardian is going to follow me around to the side. Oh my goodness, eat some food. This is where you're going to use the vast majority of your supplies, just setting this up. Uh, as you can see right now, there is a Calphite Guardian on the north and on the east side of the Calphite Queen. So she can't walk in either of those directions unless she's like catching up to the Calphite Guardian. Whoops. Um, so really all we're doing is we're tracking her towards the wall on the south and the west side of her. Once we pin her up on the wall, uh, she won't be able to take a step towards the guardians and she won't be able to take a step towards the wall and basically she's just going to be stuck. Now you can see that she's cornered up on these two rocks. She won't really be able to move anywhere for the rest of the fight. So all I have to do is pot up and go ahead and start attacking her once and running back under her. You'll notice that I'm using some full varics here. I didn't bring up full varics in the gear guide because it's really not great to use in here, but it is possible to KO her with varics. So I figured I would show it off a little bit. Uh, the trick here is you have to wait until her green health bar disappears before you attack her again. If you attack the Calphite Queen too soon, like you attack twice in a row, um, even if you run under her between those two attacks, she will attack you. If you wait for the health bar to disappear, then you attack her and run right under, uh, she will never use an attack. This does get slow at this point. Uh, on the second phase, she's using Protect from Melee, but Varex can hit through Protect from Melee. In general, she doesn't protect 100% anyway, so you could still use like a Karis Partisan to get through the second phase. And uh, you can see why it would be a pain to get like a lot of kills through the power of flinching but if you have weak gear and you just need the one calphite queen kill for the hard diaries the flinching method is definitely the way to get it done if you have any questions on what i just did to trap her in the corner here be sure to let me know in the comments section below so the calphite queen's loot table is pretty lackluster it did get a little bit of an update with that dragon pickaxe every time you kill the calphite queen she will drop two things the first will be a supply drop it could be food or potions it's not going to be a lot of it but this can help with getting extra kills in a trip uh, the other drop is going to be like actual loot her regular drops are pretty weak though the noted zami wines are nice for iron men she can drop a dragon chain body and a dragon two-hand sword but those are both pretty cheap for how rare they are 
Uh, the new big ticket item on the KQ's drop table is the Dragon Pickaxe. Just before the Dragon Pickaxe was added, the average KQ drop was 43.6k, according to the OSRS wiki. The Dragon Pickaxe is a 1 in 400 drop rate from the Calphite Queen, which the update has already affected the Dragon Pickaxe price. When I'm voice recording this right now, uh, it's currently 5 mil for a Dragon Pickaxe. If you got one pick every 400 kills right on the drop rate, that would add 12.5k GP per kill on average. That is just under a 30% increase in profit for the Calphite Queen, which is pretty significant, uh, but it's likely to continue like slowly dropping that Dragon Pickaxe price. Since the D-Pick is used in PVM situations and not just mining, it'll still be a pretty expensive item for a long time, so the Dragon Pick's gonna be the big ticket item from KQ for the foreseeable future. The amount of kills that you get per hour is gonna vary pretty heavily on your stats, your gear, and of course whether or not you have the shortcut. If you flinch the Calphite Queen, you're only gonna manage like 7 or 8 kills an hour, unless maybe you're flinching with like max gear, but that's still a pretty slow way to go about it. With some good gear, specifically the Karis Partisan and high stats, you can push 10 to 12 kills an hour without the shortcut, but this would include not dying at all, and of course, being in a rhythm with your bank trips, since you're likely taking 10 or so bank trips in an hour, you want to be in and out of there pretty quickly. Once you get the shortcut unlocked by completing the Elite Desert Diaries, you can just about double your KC. We're really talking about like a max pace here. 22 to 25 KC can be done in one hour, but most players don't tend to grind out the KQ once they're done with that Elite Diary, unless they're looking for the Pet Drop or the Dragon Pickaxe Drop. If you're trying to get a rare drop, it is going to make a huge difference to have maxed out gear and stats, of course. Uh, early on in my KQ grind, I was used to getting like 8 or 9 kills an hour, but also that was before the Karis Partisan, which is a phenomenal weapon. Unfortunately, even if you're getting the 20 to 25 KC per hour, uh, with only 55 GP per kill on average, you're really not even getting up to like 1.5 mil. GP an hour from the Calphite Queen, so this is not a great money maker. It never really has been, or at least not in a long, long time, but at least the Dragon Pickaxe did make a, a little bit of an increase here. The KQ can also drop a Calphite Queen head, which is likely what most of you are here to try and grind out. The KQ head can be mounted in your player-owned home, and talking to that mounted head is an elite desert diary requirement. The KQ head is a 1 in 128 drop, but you're also guaranteed to get a tattered head at KC 256 for those of you who are unlucky with that head drop. You can also use a KQ head to recolor a Slayer helmet, but you cannot use a tattered head to recolor the Slayer helmet. The tattered head is only to help out with that diary. The KQ also has a pet and a jar. The Calphite Princess is a 1 in 3000 drop, while the Jar of Sand is a 1 in 2000 drop. I think that is everything that I wanted to talk about when it comes to the Calphite Queen, everybody. If you still have any questions about KQ Grind, then be sure to let me know in the comments section below. As I said, I will be uploading a couple of full hours on KQ Grind with some good gear and others with worse gear to show like a bunch of different examples in the KQ fight. Uh, those will be linked in the description when they are uploaded. If you enjoyed the guide or you just got some useful information out of it, be sure to like and subscribe for more content. If you're looking for even more content, I do stream on Twitch, which should be linked on the screen and in the description. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and best of luck on your Calphite Queen grind.